Hello, fifth grade math students. We are beginning work on our sixth grade math journal with Unit 1. The activities and lessons in Unit 1 are related to how we can represent data. So there are lessons on different kinds of plots, on graphs, circle graphs, bar graphs, uh, line graphs, and information on landmarks. The first lesson, lesson two, has to do with line plots, mystery plots, and our landmarks. So as I begin today, I want to talk about what is a line plot. A line plot is a graph, and it shows data on a number line, and it shows how often that data appears. It's usually best to use a line plot with fewer than 25 numbers, but a line plot is a quick and simple way to organize data. So I'm going to talk about how we would make or construct a line plot. I have some data over here, and I'm going to talk about the number of books read by fifth graders in October so far. So I look, and I don't have real high numbers. I could put these numbers in order from least to greatest, but I see that students either read zero books, one book, or up to five books. So when I make my line plot, I'm going to take a pen, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line. And then I'm going to put numbers that represent the scale. Now, I don't have very high numbers on my, my uh, data plot over there, or my list, so I'm just going to start at zero, and I'm going to go up to five. So I've got one, two, and I try to space these out equally. So students read either zero books, one, two, three, four, or five books. And when I look at my data, these numbers represent the number of students who read that many books. So I see one zero. That means one student has read no books thus far. And I look and see one, two, three ones. So that means three students in my class have completed one book because these are the number of books, and these are the students who read that number of books. I see one, two, three, four. So I'm going to make four X's above two, because that means four of my students have completed two books in October. I see two threes, so I make two X's. I see one, four and I see one, five. So again, my numbers at the bottom represent the number of books that have been read, and my X's represent my data, how many students have read that number of books. So again, I see one student has read five books so far in October. One student has read no books so far. So I place an X to represent number of students reading that number of books. Now, a mystery line plot would be a line plot that had the X's, but it didn't have the information with a heading or a title as I do here. So, let's go to my next slide, and here is a line plot with information. And I see the horizontal line, our number line, and I see the numbers 0 through 15. And I see that some numbers have no X's above them. That means no one is represented in that number. And I'm going to take my eraser tool. I'm going to erase here. And I see what appears is a title for my line plot. And it says the number of pets in each household. So these numbers, 0 through 15, represent how many pets. The X's represent the households. So there are. One, two, three, four, five homes that have zero pets. They have no pets in their home at all. And I look over here and I say there is one household that has 14 pets. And maybe this household has 12 fish in an aquarium and a dog and a cat. And 
Over here I see there's one household that has six pets. So I'm going to take my eraser tool again, erase here, and again I define what those numbers represent. The numbers represent the number of pets from 0 to 15. The X's represent the number of households with that number of pets. So when I look here at 2, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 households have two pets. So this is a line plot and a mystery line plot where we have to match our line plot with a possible data set. Last thing I'm going to talk about today are landmarks. And you've heard about landmarks before, and you've dealt with them in math in previous years. This is just a reminder of what those terms mean. Minimum, the least. Maximum, the greatest. The mean is our average. The median is the middle number in our data set. The mode is the number that appears most often. And we can have more than one mode, or we might have no mode. And the range is the difference between our minimum and maximum. So in this unit, you'll be dealing with different kinds of data, how we represent them, and you'll be finding landmarks for our data.